you want to find out um, what material one of these presets is using, uh, you can click on the mesh and then look at the inspector tab over here and click on one of the materials here. It will give you a uh, material that this model is using. As you can see here, we can do it on the glasses as well. Show you exactly which of the preset materials that this is using. First of all, I very much recommend making duplicates of the uh, presets that you like. So what I've done is I've just selected the materials that I like and I pressed Control D on them to make these new duplicates. I'm going to drag them into uh, this My Materials folder. This is just so that in case you want to upgrade your package or re-import it or do something like that, you don't lose your data and you don't lose your progress as the import process might override your changes. And we don't want to lose changes, so we're just going to make copies. Now, right off the bat, uh, you're going to have to make a decision on how you're going to want to set these up. We currently have two methods. One of them is the centers one, and the other one is the contacts one. An important thing to note is that you really only need to have centers set up for the 1D and the polar shaders. Uh, those two require centers to actually work. Whereas the parallax one doesn't need centers, but they can be used to um, avoid some distortion with the distortion fixes over here. So centers are completely optional for parallax. The main thing for parallax is just having this parallax texture properly set up, uh, which we have a video on in the description. So if I drag one of the materials into this wicker beast's eyes, we can see that it doesn't really work uh, right. And uh, let's say we want to set this up using the centers method. And the centers method is, is usually the simplest one in case you have your base model uh, in this presets list here. And the wicker beast isn't the preset, so we're going to click on the wicker beast button here. And as you can see, it's pretty much set up, except for texture, which we'll get to in a second. If your base model is not in this list, we have a video showcasing how to find these center values manually uh, in Blender. Now, this method doesn't really work out of the box in case you have a model that has eyes that are not on their own material, like this amp wave. So, if I drag the material into these amp wave eyes, then you'll see that the hair starts to get all weird and, and hypno -y, which is kind of neat, but that's not what we want. We have a preset for the amp wave, but that doesn't really help us because the hair and the eyes share the same material. So to fix this, you're going to want to separate the eyes into their own material, which uh, we have a video on in the description as well. The other method are uh, contacts, which are basically these uh, sphere meshes, half sphere meshes, that you can place into the eyes of your mesh, of your, of your base model, uh, as if you were putting contacts, contact lenses into your eyes. We have some presets for these uh, out of the box. Uh, that sh uh, and these presets just have instructions in them walking you through how to set them up, uh, basically step by step. We also have video. Uh, that follows one of these instructions that you can follow along with. And we have a video um, showcasing how to set up contacts for a base model that is not in one of these um, that, that we don't have preset for. So that showcases a bunch of techniques that I've used. And they're all in the description. Uh, in case you want to set up one of these contacts, uh, you're going to want to follow instructions and just make sure that you have a uh, center click in the seat in the uh, centers uh, preset here which will get you the effect that you want now as for this texture here beast as for this texture here uh this is the overlay texture that's kind of being put in the wrong position uh this is something that you'll see in all of the three types of shaders that we have. So the 1D has this overlay texture, Polar has an overlay texture as well, and Parallax has uh, this Parallax texture and also overlay texture. So these texture slots all use the normal eye UVs, 
which um, means that you have to make sure that that texture lines up with the IUVs of your um, base model's eyes. So in this situation, we're using texture that's been set up to work with the Cobo doll base model um, on a wicker beast, which means that the eyes of the Cobo like, like, like we can't do this because the eyes, the, U the IUVs of the Cobo doll don't match the IUVs of the wicker beast. So we have a video uh, showcasing how to uh, set up textures um, to match your um, to, to match the UVs of your base mesh. It's in the description. But that's just something to be aware of in case your um, parallax looks like very weird, something like this, right? Or you have a weird rogue texture off to the side on, on the wicker here. Um, don't worry, everything's fine. You just need to set up some textures. We have a video for that in the description. Everything's fine. Once you have the centers and any textures set up in case you want to have textures, they're completely optional. I uh, you can start editing these effects to your liking. You can start off just tweaking the values here, set up some checkboxes here, set up more values here, just just mess around, have fun, you know. Just go go bananas. Um some of the more important things as well with these textures is these gradient ones. We have them in the hypno and the parallax. Uh, these are just one-dimensional uh, horizontal strips of, of texture. Uh, they're very small, as you can see. They're incredibly tiny. And uh, you can use them to change the color of, um, of the effect, basically, or, or the pattern, the shape, what have you, right? So you can open these up in whatever kind of editor you want. I have Krita open over here, so I'm just going to click on this, and this will select the texture in the project view, and I can just drag that into Krita, open as a new document, and select the pixel art uh, brush here, because these are very, very small. This is like 1 by 16 pixels. And I can start editing it however I want. Let's say like I want some red here or something. Save it, put it back in, and now we have a little red stripe in our eyes. Very useful. Uh, to make various complex patterns. But if I want some black there, now we have black in our eyes. That's good. Very useful. Um, so we have these for the hypno effect here and also for the parallax uh, background gradient, which controls this little gradient color over here. So if we put a different horizontal gradient over there, you'll see we'll have different colors. So yeah, that is about it. 